So right now we are right here. And I think it's important that we go over California Penal Code. And there are five chapters. <laughs> and what this does is this signifies what the officers of the law are supposed to do. So again, let me go ahead and diagram that here. So we have the penal code. We have the officer. And we have the DA. Okay. So, well, actually, is that... Well, it's it, it, it's okay this way. It's really not. It, it should actually be a different way, but, th but this is okay. So the penal code is enforced by the officer and the crime oscillates between the DA and the officer and the, the DA uh, citizen. whether or not a crime has been committed. Basically, that's what happens. So the officer, um, yeah, that's that's how it works. So depending on whether it's family or criminal, okay? Uh, fa uh, penal code uh, family or criminal. And I'm not a, I'm not 100% sure if you'd call it the same thing, but I think so. Um, or civil, basically. The penal code is enforced by law enforcement and when a crime is committed, the DA sits between the citizen and the investigative law enforcement unit to ensure that the penal code was followed and that the United States Constitution was followed. And that if, in fact, there's enough evidence, the DA is going to get a conviction. Plain and simple. I would say that the number one defense in criminal law is how was the information obtained? So therefore, was the Fourth Amendment violated or not? And can we suppress whatever was found uh, during a search? Can we suppress it as a defense for the crime that the district attorney and or law enforcement is saying was committed? That's basically it. Okay. So let's look at the first chapter. I'll read this very quick and we'll compare it to this and I'll try to be as quick as possible. All right. A gun uh, penal code, uh, starting from the first one, is uh, 18100. A gun violence restraining order is an order in writing signed by the court prohibiting and enjoining a named person from having in his or her custody or control owning, purchasing, possessing, or receiving any firearms or ammunitions. Basically, nuts and bolts. Gun Violence Restraining Orders, Penal Code 18100 says, if we serve you with a GVRO, you can't own anything. Your Second Amendment is gone, basically. Penal Code 18105, the Judicial Council shall describe the forms of the petitions and orders. So basically, 18105, the ju Judicial Council shall design and make the forms that law enforcement will utilize and that the law and or the court system will utilize to facilitate the GVRO process. So, Penal Code 1817. A, okay, so 18 matters. 18107. A petition for a gun violence restraining order shall describe the number, types, and locations of any firearms, ammunition, ammunition presently believed by the petitioner to be possessed or controlled by the subject of the petition. A petition for gun sh shall describe. In my case, the only description was this. There's nothing else. In all of the forms, this is the only thing. Do you think that this satisfies 18107? No. 18109. 
This division does not require a law enforcement agency or a law enforcement officer to seek a gun violence restraining order in any case, including, but not limited to, in a case in which the agency or officers concludes after investigation that the criteria for issuance of a gun violence restraining order are not satisfied. Did this happen? No. Happened. Baseball happened. It happened. I wondered. I wondered this uh, in court. Why I it stipulated uh, why they didn't stop and what the continuance was all about. All of that confuses me, very, very much. One eight one one zero. Prior to a hearing on the issuance, renewal, or termination of an order. So prior to hearing. Under Chapter 3, commencing with Section 18150 or Chapter 4, commencing with Section 18170, the court shall ensure that a search, as described in subdivision of Section 6306 of the Family Code, is conducted. After issuing its ruling, the court shall provide the advisement described in subdivision Section 6306 of the Family Code and shall keep information obtained from a search conducted pursuant to this section confidential in accordance with the subdivision of Section 6306 of the Family Code. I believe that what this is saying is, prior to a hearing, this is 18110, and this is August 8th, 2023 is what that is talking about prior to hearing on the issuance court shall provide we wait, wait, court shall ensure that a search as described okay basically what this is saying is the search warrant was sealed confidential but they came without a warrant so your honorable, honorable judge, uh, uh, Judge uh, David Hirsch issued the search warrant. It's sealed and confidential. Search. Found. Zero. Okay. Well, let's let's call it one 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 eight one one one. But I think that's a this is a database search. Database search found zero. Um, basically, what that is 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 uh, it, when you search the database for uh, registered firearms, it's going to come back zero. That's what that is. I, I, this form, I, I'm not sure why I have the wrong one. And this is uh, uh, 18115. The court shall notify the Department of Justice when a gun, okay, should notify, okay, notice, okay, okay. So uh, Penal Code 18115 is on, on August 8th or on August 23rd when I, um, when the Second Amendment right was taken away and the uh, one year was stipulated, the Department of Justified, the Department of Justice was notified that I received a, a GVRO. Okay, uh, Penal Code uh, 18120. Uh, this is a very long um, penal code, and basically what it says is I can't own anything, and if I do, uh, it's punishable, and it's a misdemeanor, and I can get in trouble, which is why uh, on the 24th at 12.15 a.m., I turned in the single 9mm bullet that law enforcement missed when they conducted the search on August 8th. And Penal Code 181821 is there's no filing for, for an application. Uh, basically, that states that if, if someone uh, other than law enforcement, there's uh, nothing that they need to pay to, uh, to start the uh, gun bonds restraining order process. Uh, regard electronic filing. Uh, Penal Code 18122 is more of the same. Uh, it's all about um, office work, paperwork. Okay. All right. Okay, this is, uh, so that's chapter one. This is penal code 18125, a temporary gun 
violence restraining order may be issued, oh, ex parte basis only if a law enforcement asserts and a judicial officer. Okay, so here's where we get into the nitty gritty. A temporary emergency gun violence restraining order may be issued on an ex parte basis only if a law enforcement officer asserts and a judicial officer finds that there is reasonable cause to believe both of the following. So for, for 18125, 18125 to equal true, to equal true, both of these, number one, the subject of the, of the petition, me, poses an immediate and present danger of causing personal injury to himself, herself, or another by having in his or her custody or control owning, purchasing, possessing, or receiving a firearm or ammunition. Number one, that is false. The database search would have found that I don't own a firearm, and that is why the declaration was stated the way that it is. It substantiates that you can get ex parte. What investigation was done? This is just a... a, a you see the point. Number two. A temporary... Emergency gun violence restraining order is necessary to prevent personal injury to the subject of the position, meaning me, or another because less restrictive alternatives either have been tried and found to be ineffective or have been determined to be inadequate or inappropriate for the circumstances of the subject of the petition. Repeating. A temporary emergency gun violence restraining order is necessary to prevent personal injury to the subject of the petition or another because less restrictive alternatives either have been tried and found to be ineffective or have been determined to be inadequate or inappropriate for the circumstances of the subject of the petition. The August 1 to August 3rd Detective Justin utilized just this to take away my Second Amendment right from August 3rd all the way to the 23rd at 8.30 a.m. Besides, this violates 1st, 4th, 6th, and 14th, my constitutional rights. Temporary Gun violence restraining order issued pers pursuant to this chapter shall prohibit the subject of the petition from having in his or her custody. Okay, this basically says and shall expire 21 days from the date the order is issued. So this begs the question, why the continuance? On the 23rd, why did you want the continuance, Detective Justin and counsel? I still question what was going on? What trickery? I don't understand. Why the continuance? You already have a penal code that says you don't have to continue the GVRO. You have no evidence. You searched my home on the 8th. You searched the database. I don't own a weapon. I don't have a weapon. And yet the GVRO continued. Penal Code 18130, a temporary emergency gun violence training order is valid only if it is issued by a judicial officer and making the, after making findings required by Section 18125 and pursuant to a specific re request by law enforcement officer. So a temporary emergency gun violence training order is valid only if it is issued by a judicial officer after making the findings required by Section 1825. This is 18125. One, three, O. Oh. No. Amy Van Sickle and Judge and the Honorable Judge uh, David Hirsch, they did not comply with one eight one three O. Oh. Did not. One eight one three five. 
This is also, I know they didn't. 18135. A temporary emergency gun bonds restraining order issued under this chapter shall include all of the following. A statement. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I can erase that. Hold on. This is basically just office work. Just stating what it needs to say. And it, it, it didn't. It didn't. Well, yeah, it did. Yeah, address, date and time. Bullshit. Yeah, just crap. Okay. 1814. Same thing. Just basically office work. Okay, uh, 18145, a judicial officer may issue a temporary emergency gun violence restraining order orally based on the statements of law enforcement officer made in accordance with subdivision of section 1814. If time and circumstances permit, a temporary emergency gun violence restraining order may be obtained in writing and based on a declaration signed under penalty of perjury. Okay, so this is 18145 equals... Um, false. If I'm able to place the citizen informant, her, who said this, because I know who this is, on the stand, under oath, this individual and her boyfriend, under oath, and when my legal team discusses all of the details within this, under, signed under penalty of perjury, it will come out that every single word here is not true. It's fiction. The presiding judge of the Superior Court of each county shall designate at least one judge or referee who shall be reasonably available to issue temporary... Okay, so this is where... Okay, B. Oh, how did I do that? False. It didn't happen. The presiding judge of the Superior Court of each county shall designate at least one judge, commissioner, or referee who shall be reasonably available to issue temporary emergency gun violence restraining orders when the court is not in session. Is that Amy Van Sickle? Or is that the Honorable David Hirsch? I don't know. Call spade a spade. I don't know. Is it false? Is it true? I don't know. Uh, 18148. Within 21 days, the court shall issue another uh, to determine if a gun violence ratio should be issued to Chapter 14 after notice. Okay. <laughs> okay. Basically, 18148 says that basically, Marty, you have a court appearance within 21 days. You're going to lose your Second Amendment right for 21 days or less, which was from the 8th, August 8th, from the search warrant, or August 3rd, when it was when the temporary gun violence restraining order happened. They searched on the 8th. I was notified on the 8th that I have a court appearance on the 23rd. So from the 3rd to the 8th to the 8th to the 23rd, I lost my Second Amendment right. That's basically what this says. Great. Thanks a lot.